here wants to give a testimony today? Can you please put up your hand? Anyone like to give a testimony? Okay, Benny, yes, I have your name. Let's prepare our hearts to begin tonight's prayer meeting. The scripture says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is a pride. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. How gracious our God is. Let us begin by singing the psalm that we have been learning to sing. This morning we have the joy of getting all the stuff to sing one by one to see who hasn't learned. Uh, but they all did very well. I was very surprised. Though some struggle, but that's normal 
in a short time. Well, let, I'm not going to ask you to sing one by one, but let's sing it twice and familiarize with the tune. I'm sure you know where to look for that song, lyrics. Psalm 125, verses 1 to 2. Okay, so you can open your Bible if you do not remember the words. Oh, is it coming up? Oh, I didn't see that. It's on the screen. Okay. So we shall sing Psalm 125, verses 1 to 2. They that trust in the Lord. Very good. Let us all arise and sing our first hymn, hymn number 227, <clears throat> 227, until then. We give uh, the peer crew a bit of time to get it done, 227, that's good.
look to God in prayer, may I call on Elder N. Pokot to come forward and lead us in prayer. <coughs> Let us look to the God in prayer. God, our gracious Father, we thank thee once again that we can be in thy presence, in the house of prayer, with thy people. We ask, Lord, that thou wilt forgive our sins and hear us. Bow down thy ears and listen to us, even this me. For we know that all this made possible because of Jesus Christ, your Son, who gave his life for us, that we through him can come to you. Lord, we praise you that we can meet in this manner in the safety that the Lord has graciously provided us, even this day of global pandemic. Praise the Lord for the new year, for another opportunity to walk with you and to experience your goodness, pray the Lord, we will continually, fervently labor together with you in thy kingdom. Pray for the preaching of thy word, and for the testimonies of the brethren, which some will share tonight, that our hearts be filled with joy and thanksgiving, with love and dedication to thy service. Pray that God, you will renew our love and passion for you, and the work of the gospel. We all pray and ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> we will sing Psalm 67. Psalm 67, the first two verses. God be merciful unto us. Thank you. For those who are new in Gethsemane and have not learned how to sing some of the psalms uh, that we sing, it's not only some scripture in songs, I hope you will learn them. Not only the tune, the tune, uh, tunes are given so that the words, may the words may remain in our minds. So we pray that you will also enjoy memorizing these words. Uh, sometimes when I try to recite, I can't remember quickly, but when I start singing, the words just comes up. Uh, so it will be good if you can also start memorizing quite a number of scriptures or scripture verses that we have been um, memorizing and singing. And I hope all of you will quickly learn 
that will be a great help to you as well. Now we shall sing Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. <coughs> be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Once again. Please open your Bibles to the fifth chapter of Exodus. We will run through this chapter and go straight into chapter 6 for tonight's devotion. And after the devotion, we will have the testimonies from two who have given their names. Uh, normally, we have a long queue of brethren to give testimony but this time maybe I said only three minutes only two people want to give three minute testimony well <coughs> uh, so since there are so few I will not be extending it to next week uh, because we reminded a couple of times already this week and even today but only two names so uh, unless you really want Please send your message in, I will consider. But no official uh, time for testimony next week. But if you really feel very bad, you have not given your testimony, and you really want to give testimony, we will still be gracious to you. Send in your own uh, request uh, to Brother Norifel, and then we will make opportunity for you. All right, let's look at Exodus chapter 5, and may the Lord... Grand us understanding as we go through <coughs> this chapter. I want to begin by pointing your attention to verse 1. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now, in chapter 5 and chapter 6, we see three characters playing a major role. But among these three, the most prominent one is the Lord God of Israel. And the other two characters are Moses and Pharaoh. Interestingly, of the three, without a doubt, no one stand shoulder to shoulder with the first, the Lord himself. However, Pharaoh thinks he has an upper hand. Pharaoh thinks that he is the greatest one. He has been worshipped as a god by the Egyptians for a long time. He knew that the Jews generally did not worship him. However, he had an upper hand on the people of Israel. And so he had caused him to cause himself to think that there is no other person in all the worlds who is like unto him. 
So we here see a huge collision. The collision is huge, not because the opposing forces are equal in strength. In fact, the, uh, Pharaoh is no match for the Lord. Absolutely no match. But God let him play the game that he wants to play so that God will once and for all show to the Egyptians Pharaoh is nothing but the Lord is in control and he is on the throne. And so the game begins here. Over the next few chapters, we see how the Lord slowly and systematically destroys the pride and the self-assuring ways of Pharaoh. Moses, of course, as we know, is on the Lord's side. But the Lord uses Moses for his own glory. Moses had an aid, his brother, Aaron. After meeting with the elders of Israel, it was almost like a leadership retreat. Moses and Aaron goes to Pharaoh's palace. We saw the meeting or the retreat uh, in the last three verses of chapter 4. Moses and Aaron meeting with the elders of the children of Israel. And I told you it was a really amazing situation where the elders of Israel accepted Moses, whom they really didn't know very well. Because for eight years, Moses was not part and parcel of the Jewish life. He lived in Pharaoh's palace for 40 years. Then he ran away to Midianites' land, and he spent another 40 years there. Hardly anyone know. Aaron's pre presence surely had helped him. Nonetheless, it's not Aaron, but the Lord's hand that brought Moses to such an acceptance by the leaders of Israel. I have stressed that quite a bit last week and did apply that into our lives. Now, even though God has given him such a favorable standing with the elders of Israel, Moses needed God's help to get his way to Pharaoh. As we have noted here, when Moses and Aaron appeared before Pharaoh, they right away mentioned, thus said the Lord God of Israel. There was no other introductions. There were no other niceties and formalities being played out. Maybe there was some form of Egyptian greeting, which is not recorded here. I tend to believe it all worked out exactly as it is here. One might think otherwise, but there's no reason for me to think any other way but then Moses and Aaron making this entry into the palace. And I kept thinking, how was this possible? Because it's not easy to come before great emperors without previous arrangements and proper formal introductions. But this must be again the providence of God that gave access for Moses and Aaron to come before the great king. Moses and Aaron went in. That's what the scripture says. They went in. They were not brought in. They just marched in. I'm sure with proper decorum because they are representing God and they wouldn't act foolishly. They wouldn't act as though they are rebels of the country. So the moment they went in and Pharaoh was on his throne and they engaged in a conversation, Moses immediately said to Pharaoh, as soon as he entered the throne room 
of Pharaoh's palace. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. What audacious words one might think. Command, demand, obedience from the king is required. Let my people go. But Pharaoh's reply, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? I don't know him. Who are you talking about? Followed by these words. That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. Hmm. So you think you can come in and say that somebody says that I should do something? Now, who is that man that I should obey him? And especially to let my slaves, the Jews, the Hebrews go. Who is that powerful person? Then he, with great assertion, declared, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. <coughs> you could not have expected a worst scenario for Moses and Aaron than this. Moses came all the way from the foot of Ma the Mount of God in the land of the Midianites, believing everything that God said to him, that God is going to use him to deliver the people out of Pharaoh's hand. But God did not give him the details of the struggles that he had to face. God said, well, if there are any issues, these are the miracles that I give you as signs. So he had the road, of, the road that he carried with him, which God asked him to take along. And there he was standing in the authority of the Lord and in the power of God, but he was completely thrashed. Who is the Lord you are talking about? I know not the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. It looks like no go sign, red light. No, nope, your mission is over. But Moses was not just about to give up. He tried again. Here we said, they said, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. He is answering the question, who is the Lord? So Moses says, well, if you do not know who Jehovah the Lord is. You remember the question was asked by Moses himself when God appeared to him. Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, what? I am that. I am the God of your father, Abraham. So now he is going to give that answer to Pharaoh. The God of Hebrews hath met us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. So Moses says, please let us go. We need to worship our God. We need to give sacrifices to the Lord, lest God may destroy us. We need to go. And the king of Egypt said unto them, verse 4, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens. In other words, Pharaoh said, Are you trying to get these people off their jobs? Are you trying to disturb the peace and the tranquility and the progress we are making in this country? You and your worship, you and your God, should I listen to you so that 
my nation's progress may be hindered. Get back to your works. Go back to your burdens. Dear friends, this struggle between the Lord God and the powers of this world still exists. The struggle between Jehovah, the creator of the world who commanded us to work for six days and the seventh day to rest and worship him and the world that wants every bit of you for itself is still on. If you go back, if you go to the world to study, to work, to enjoy some kind of activities, they're going to tell you, who is the Lord? Who is he? You get back to what I say. If you want to survive in this world, if you want to be part of this earthly kingdom, if you want to enjoy the things that we offer, get in line where we tell you and do the work. Like it or not, the world has been conditioning our minds all the time. From, from the time you go into nursery or kindergarten or primary school, you have been conditioned to give obeisance to the world more than God. Every one of us. Almost brainwashed. Christians often think we can have God on one side and the world on the other side. And both of them can equal power over our lives. And many of us are quite silent when the world demands that we give more or equal authority to, go, to the world. It's a sad reality. Blessed is a man who always will remember that God is the sovereign one and not the world. But the voice of the world is near us. The voice of the world and its insistence are really felt because they are going to force you, they're going to compel you with real situation. Watch this. Verse 5, Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and he make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make bricks as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, and that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Pharaoh said, according to what we read, within 24 hours, within that day itself, that these people, Israel, whom Moses and Aaron represented, should not be allowed to relax. They cannot go in fact, Moses and Aaron were not saying they don't want to do work at all. They were saying, please let us go. If you look at verse 3, after the first rebuttal by Pharaoh, Moses seemed to have sort of negotiated by saying in verse 3, let us go, we pray the three days journey into the desert. So it was like, if you don't want us to go for long, then please give us three days. Let's go out into the desert for three days and worship. 
In fact, this is not something that he said on his own. God himself taught him to say it. Look at chapter 3. And verse 18. Chapter 3, verse 18. And they shall hearken unto thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and he shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. So Moses recalled what God said, and said, Well, why not then three days, O king? Three days. And that's the time Pharaoh started to harden his heart and said, hmm, dare you ask three days? Go back to work, you lazy bums. You're not going to waste your time. Make sure you work hard if you want rewards. But he made it even harder for the people. Last time, they were given plenty of hay, which is mixed with clay to make bricks. But now he says, don't give them hay. No more provision of hay. Let them go and find for themselves. And worse still, he told them to make it all the more difficult. Verse 7, you shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Until now we have given, but no more. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And then verse 8 says, And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, and ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle, therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. So Pharaoh said, let's work into their psyche. Let's don't give them too much pleasure. Maybe they are thinking about worship because they got too much time in their hands. Let's make sure they have no time to waste, and they won't think about their God and worshiping. Let's demand that they work hard. So let's remove the straw and let's require more bricks and make it as tough as possible. Dear friends, this is what the world does. You step into the world and want to do something for your own living, they're never going to stop. let you stop there even if you have enough. When you work hard, they will use all kinds of techniques. Today, modern slavery, as I call, and I call it, without a doubt, modern slavery, they use new techniques of material rewards. Make sure God's people work less for God and more for the world, and that's happening. There are lots and lots of burdens on our shoulders. You take loans, you make credit purchases, you buy big houses, and they are all burdens on your shoulder which you must serve. Instead of buying a four-room, you buy a, buy a five-room. Instead of buying a four-room, you buy a condominium. Even though condominium rooms are smaller than the four-room flats because of prestige. The higher you desire this world, the greater the burden. I do not know of any Singaporean yet, there may be one or two, who has paid everything in full from the beginning for any of these things they buy. Is there anyone here who bought a property or a flat and paid full right from the beginning? Please show me your hand. So you have a burden on your shoulder. Maybe a few of us have paid off. Maybe many of us, many who are above 50 probably have paid off your flat. But if you have gone for bigger and bigger, 
you have not paid off. Most of you. Some might, if God has blessed you. You buy cars. You buy bigger cars. Your businesses never stop. What is the result? Burdens and burdens. You don't need to pray. You don't need to have family devotion. You don't need the disciplines that make your family godly. Even so many Gethsemanians, they are stuck in the world. They can't take themselves out. Think carefully. I'm not going to make any more statements on you and the world. If you are wise enough and the Spirit of God is working in your heart, there's enough light for you to know what I'm saying. But even though I repeat a hundred times, you're not going to hear. That's how it is. Blessed is a man who sees the, the yoke of the world on his shoulders and learn to shake it off and say, my God says, let my people go. I'm not saying you don't pay your loans. I'm not saying you don't pay your taxes. I'm not saying you don't work hard. But I'm saying godliness with contentment is great gain. The more you love the world, the greater the yoke that the world is going to put on you and the lesser your time and your energy for the Lord who created you and redeemed you with his own life. And that's the truth. I was told by my son Cornelius the other day, Daddy, so and so shared with me something along this line and we need to pray. So I said, what's that? And he said, well, he's a particular brother. He's thinking about giving up his profession to take a less burdensome job and all in the family think he's crazy to do so. And the reason why he's doing so is that he may be more godly in his ways. He says the way he's going, plenty of money, plenty of uh, appreciation from his bosses, plenty of chances to make more money will not give him time to pray or to read the scriptures or attend prayer meeting or fellowship. And so he has tendered his resignation in looking for a less burdensome profession and learning to live within means. When I heard that, I said, Lord, that is a revival. And I told my son, may God give us more men like this in Gethsemane. Then this church has future in godly ways. We don't want elders and deacons who don't have time to pray for the church and for themselves. We don't want elders and deacons who cannot sit with the children and sing a song in the morning and read a portion and pray, to, pray for them and pray with them. What are they for? If they can't do it in the house, how can they do that in this church? No, they would take down this church. It's just a matter of time. Please do not think the world doesn't have a yoke which will prevent us from coming to know God and serving Him with all our heart. When God used Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh to let his people go, even for three days he wouldn't allow The more you desire for things in this world, the more the world will give and the more the world will keep you away from God. You cannot serve God and mammon. You will either love one and hate the other or you will hate one and serve the other. Jesus has spoken very clearly of this and the scripture constantly tells us. 
So there they put more work. Now let's move on, verse 10. And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it. Yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. People start to travel. Now they cannot stay in one place like Goshen. Now they have to travel all through Egypt. Far place. You know, Egyptian kingdom is very large. It's not like Singapore. It's a huge area. Maybe it covered places like Ethiopia and further down, Yemen and so on. It's a huge area. And people had to go all over the place to find straw and then bring them back. Just imagine how tough life has become. All because Moses appeared in the scene for God's sake. Take this pulpit for God. Anyone dares? Take this pulpit for God. You will feel the wrath of the people, even in this congregation. You will feel their despising, their disrespect, and their ignorance. Ah, pastor? Ah. You take this pulpit for God's sake. Whoever you be, you will taste the frustration of the people. Because God's word will not help them to build bridges with the world. God's word will be constantly telling the people, burn those bridges. And when they try to, they will get beaten out by the world. They will have afflictions on them. And they're going to come back to you and say, Pastor, you said this, but look what happened. I, I think I have enough. I think I have enough. And they put the blame on you and they walk off. As a you burdened them. You see what's going to happen? See? Let's move on. In verse 13, And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the offices of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten. So Jewish leaders got beaten. These are Jewish people who were in charge of smaller groups of Jews who were supposed to produce a certain number of bricks. And they beaten them, saying, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as Heretofore, verse 15, Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick, and behold, thy servants are beaten. But the fault is in thine own people. But he said, Ye are idle. E are idle. Christians, does that sound familiar? When you obey God, people say you are lazy. When my wife decided to be a stay home mom, she was told, You are lazy. And she shed tears and said, Because she was a very, very hardworking student. She went all the way in uh, pursuit of study, and she is one I know who loves to work. But when she was told in Gethsemane that she was lazy because she didn't go to work and make money to support Pastor Koshi, who was not paid well enough, what can that wife do? That's what this world is. When you take upon the right, rest, right duties that God gives to you, the world doesn't understand. They smell laziness. Because to them, serving God is not activity. Serving God is not the right work. That's lazy people. Lazy people serve God. Lazy people obey God. Lazy people. Really. 
you are idle, you are idle. Therefore ye say, you know, some of you who work so hard for the world and don't take care of your own family, you think you're hardworking? No. No. You're building bridges with the world. You're not where you're supposed to be. You're never contented. This is not just, I'm not just saying to ladies, I'm also talking to men. You better know some things are so important which you have long forgotten and you ignore to the point that you don't even feel there's a need to consider these things. It's okay, it's like that because he is in that position. Because he's in that company. Because this is his appointment. Because he's like that. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Ignore God. Ignore worship. Ignore. Verse 18. Go therefore now and work. For there shall no straw be given you, yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. Imagine that. This is what Moses' words have brought about. In evil case. In other words, they are in a situation of terrible affliction. Because it has been said, you shall not Minish ought from your bricks of your daily tasks. They cannot diminish the numbers. So, verse 20. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because ye have made our Savior, sorry, our Savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. Wow, this is what I said. You want to speak for God and teach people how to serve God? The people are going to say, hey, you have not made our life easy. You have not made our lives easy. You made it difficult. Look, look. Look, Pastor Koshi is crazy. You know, if you follow what he says, how much money you will lose? Do you know if you follow him and say what and do what he says? <laughs> no, don't don't say anything. Don't do anything that I say. Do only if you know it is God's word. At least give me some break. I'm not Moses. The Lord look upon you and judge. That's a conclusion. Of who? The people of Israel. Verse 22 to 23. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? The question, why? Why, Lord? Why me? Why? Why do you ask me to do this? Why? Many who came into the ministry of Gethsemane asked that question, why? Not to hear the answer from God, but to give an excuse to quit the ministry. They say, why? Why? Why should I wait? Why should not I plot my way through? They left. Because they are not willing to take difficulties. We will, to a certain extent, right? Moses, 
Yes, you came from, from Midiana, its land. You walked a long distance. And you have nobody now. Your wife and children, they are in the land of the Midianites. They are not here with you. You don't have Jethro. He is now taking care of the sheep back in that land. Aaron is quiet. And the people, the elders, who cheered you in the beginning, you had retreat with them, they are not were to be found. You are now receiving the ire of the people. Lonely man. Why? Why? I tell you something. This afternoon I pick up the phone and call Brother Jeremy Teo. I hope he will forgive me for saying this to you. I said, Jeremy. Tonight we are going to pray for Kuching. Is there any prayer I do? He said, yes, uh, pray that Simon and family will soon become members. I say, good, any more? Well, nothing much. Pray, uh, pray that the Lord will prosper us and we are very happy that Brother Samson is coming online and pre preaching through the Zoom. Then I said, yes, that's good, praise God. We are glad that Samson is ministering to you. And then I said, we want to have a meeting with you, Samson, and Eldama and I, we will call you, then we want to report to the Board of Elders uh, how should things be. I say, okay, Pastor Kushi, we will have a meeting this week. And I said, I want to tell you something. I think the greatest need that Kuching has is a resident pastor or resident preacher. Then he kept quiet and he smiled. He said, yes, we have been praying for that. I said, very good, let's pray. But God sort of answered. I said, yes, really? How did he? Oh, Brother Samson, I said, through Zoom. We never realized COVID-19 seemed to be an answer because every time preacher Samson is speaking to us, every meeting, I said, Virtual pastor? I'm not speaking against Samson. I'm not speaking against what he's doing. But I said, that is not what the Bible wants. I asked Jeremy, Jeremy, can you take care of your family from 100 miles away? Can you be a father? Can you be a mother to your children from 100 miles away? Can you do your father's job? Can you? He laughed and said, of course not. Now I understand what you meant. I, then I didn't stop. I asked him, can you be a shepherd when you're away from the sheep? Of course not. How can Samson or me or anyone else be a pastor for you from 100 miles away? If you don't have a pastor in the congregation, no one would know what's going on with people. Every time come on before the camera, everybody, you know, do the makeup and sit there and smile. Hello. That's no pastorship. So somebody got to be there to rebuke you when you're wrong, to guide you when you are going astray, to give you the right message. From 100 miles away, you don't know what the people need. Again, we thank God for St uh, Brother Samson's work. The Kuching ministry is not going to prosper if they don't have a resident preacher. Let me say, be very frank about it. I don't think that we are going to make that place wonderful by preaching from here. No. We need a faithful man right in that place. Then I look at him and I said, Jeremy, why don't be a preacher? Stop serving Toyota. Come into God's kingdom. Then he put his head like this and he said, I'm thinking about it. I said, we're going to pray. God opened this door into Kuching 
to Sarawak, it's a big state, and all of East Malaysia. And I was so burdened for last week. This is not about from Singapore we manage things there. It's about God's servant being there to do God's work. I said, Jeremy, I knew for long. You love God's word. I know your passion. Why not? I said, you have been praying for your father. He said, yes. So how is it now? Because his father is very old, past 85, I think 86 or 87. He's quite weak. He said, Pastor Koshi, something amazing happened. I said, what's that? Yesterday, I went to my father's room. I told him about the gospel. I preached to him everything I know about the gospel. Nothing left. I said, how was the reply? He never opposed me this time. He listened to it as though he was saying, thank you, son. He said, oh, that's good. Then he said, let me tell you, my mom was sitting outside the room and she heard everything I said to the dad. When I came out, my mom was looking at me as though I did something very good for the dad. She never opposed me. She never even said a word against all that I told my dad. I said, then go and ask your father soon as possible whether he's ready to be baptized. Go, ask whether he believe and be baptized. I hope that will be a confirmation for you to go into the ministry. And I said these words this afternoon to Jeremy. But at the same time in my head, I was fighting a big battle. He got four children. Four? Right. Or five. Daniel, Samuel, Gabriel, Joseph. Four. Four boys. They're still studying. Who will look after them? It's a family business that a father brought, uh, you know, father helped to grow over the years. One of his brothers has a different branch in another side of Sarawak. And this one is run by his younger brother called Terence, who is not married. I know Terence also for a long time. And all these run through my head in those few moments. Am I asking to quit this family business which they... My father has worked so hard for maybe five, six decades, and now the second generation is thriving on it. Well, I don't know. I don't want to think. I said, go and talk to your wife tonight. Go and pray. I said, thank you, Pastor Kush. He was not against. He was very calm. He listened to the whole thing. And I'm praying in my heart. I hope you pray. If it is God's will, of course, I don't want to assume or presume that this is God's will. Let's pray if it is God's will. Jeremy will, will give his life. Because I can't find for anyone unless God suddenly brings someone from the dust. He can do that. I can't find anyone to have a burden for that place but Jeremy. It is Jeremy, by the grace of God, by the work of God, who become instrumental for this congregation there. There was no congregation. It is his burden for the doctrines that we believe in, Bible Presbyterian doctrines, and the gospel truths. He was attending Methodist Church, where his wife was originally from. And he's a very, very intelligent man. Very sincere and hardworking person. May God have mercy, I don't know. I think if he steps in, it'll be amazing. Now, I'm sorry, maybe I should have kept quiet. But this is my burden. If this church has taken burdens like mission station, 
Let's know what it means. It's not just sending money and trying to be smart from here. It's thinking about every ministry according to God's word. We must have a preacher there. And let's pray. Because God said, through the Lord Jesus Christ, harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of harvest may send laborers. Kuching is a harvest field ready for harvest. Gethsemane better see the harvest that is ready. And pray for what? Pray for what? Not harvest. The harvest is ready. Pray for what? Reapers. Harvesters. I hope you know what we need to pray. Moses asked why. I don't know what Jeremy is going to ask God tonight. Maybe why? Why you ask Pastor Kushi to tell this to me? Why? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he has the answer from the Lord. Praise God if that's the case. I was wondering, Lord, why the Lord put this burden on my head? I mean, Kuching. Why don't Reverend Lee Kim Shong just hold on to it? Why don't Kavri Jaya just bear it? Why did they come and ask us to take this from them? I never asked for it. I never coveted it. Never ever moved. We just did what we were expected to do. And thank God for Preacher Samson who very willingly served all this time with joy. He is very happy serving the Lord. Well, if Samson, Elizabeth and Valencia are willing to go and settle down in Sarawak, you'll be good. But even then, it's not in their hands. These Malaysians may not give them the visa to stay there. So why did God give this to me? Maybe for this purpose. To tell Jeremy, wake up and do God's work. Maybe. If this whole thing didn't happen, I'm never going to say that to him. Because I will say, Reverend Lee Kim Shong should be leading. Kauri Jaya should be doing this. But now it's on me. Am I unsettling them? Will his wife, Nikki, be upset with me? Will his parents be upset with me? I don't know. I don't want to think. If I think, of course, I'll be scared. I'm just a man. Nothing but flesh. You look at verse 23 where Moses says, For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people, neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Moses is devastated, disappointed and disillusioned. He's not disappointed that Pharaoh didn't let the people go, but he is disappointed that the people are suffering. People are really beaten up. If he is beaten up, it would be okay. Hundreds and thousands of people are suffering. More labor, more pain, more agony, more accusations, more embarrassment. Oh, Moses, Moses, you came from that wilderness to do this to us? To whom can Moses turn? To God alone. Praise God. To God alone. Thank God his wife is not there. Poor wife. She can't take this burden. Thank God for her. His sons are not there. They won't be able to take this burden. God kept them safe. Otherwise Moses have additional burden, right? God says to us, cast your burdens upon me, for I care for you. 
cast your burdens upon the Lord, for he careth for you. God did not slap Moses' face. Why do you come to me? Asking questions, why? Why? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? No. He is a merciful God. He knows we are nothing but dust. He knows Moses' frailty. Look at verse 1 of chapter 6 quickly. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of the pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out of out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you in unto the land concerning them which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. What an answer. You want to know why I brought you here? To tell you I will show to Pharaoh that stubborn, selfish tyrant that he is nothing. I am the great God. And I am the faithful one who will keep my promise to your fathers. And I will do what I said I will do, for I am almighty. What a great promise, dear brothers and sisters. You who have stood with me for the past 30 years of this church ministry, we have come to a stage where our burdens are many, our challenges are many, and let us not run away from it. If the world would make our life miserable, let them do it, for God is almighty to prove his glory. Don't chicken out if you are a true-blooded Gethsemane. If you know what we stand for, if you say you are a biblical Christian, then say goodbye to your addictions to the world. Don't let the world put its yoke on your shoulder and keep you away from what God wants you to do. Get out. Let my people go. Let them serve me. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, continue to do thy great work in our midst. Your voice, your command, we will obey. Your will must be accomplished. Thank you for choosing us to be your servants. Thank you for giving us a place in your vineyard. We will rejoice. Some will make bricks. Some will be officers, some will be the servants of God. In our own assigned areas, we must love our God. Our hearts cannot be disappointed. 
we cannot be cast down. We must rise in faith. Make us hear, O God, again the, thy great name, Jehovah. I am the Lord. We bow before you in worship, for we want to see thy mighty hand working out great things in the midst of thy people and beyond this region, even to the ends of the world. May Jesus be praised. God, be merciful unto us and cause thy face to shine upon us that thy people may worship you here and every day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Okay, brethren, uh, we have testimony time, uh, three minutes each. First, Brother Benny, followed by Dorcas. Please come up and use the... Psalm 34, verse 3. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 136, verses 1 to 3 and 23 to 26. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God, God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever, who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath re redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever, who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God, God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. In the year 2020, as a family, we received many bountiful blessings from our living and true God. This opportunity to give another testimony in the midst of this congregation itself is a great blessing. Thank God for the many opportunities in Gethsemane. We as a family can come together, worship the Lord, serve the Lord, learn the word, of word and have fellowship with like-minded brethren. Thank God for the GCM and the children's choir team for the great effort in teaching our children regularly. My younger son Ryan is greatly blessed by this ministry. I also thank God for the vibrant and effective Gethsemane Youth Ministry in our church where my elder son Ruben is joyfully participating and growing in the Lord. Thank God for the ladies, men's and others fellowship groups where we are regularly fed with the precious word of God. Above all, we thank God for the many faithful brethren and families in our midst and the good testimony of you, uh, the good testimony you are bearing for the Lord. Your life is a great encouragement for me and my family and we regularly praise God for your lives. I would like to quote Apostle Paul's prayer for the faithful brethren in Colossae. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Thank God for the safety, protection, good health we have enjoyed all of last year as a family. God provided all our necessities. God was good towards us. Dear brethren, as we are living in the last of the last days, let us fight a good fight of faith and overcome evil with good. Let us run with patience the race set before us. Let me conclude my testimony by reading from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore the Lord thy God. He is good. 
He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to the thousand generations. All praise and glory to God. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I thank the Lord for five years of education, for victories, for falls, and for His mercy, and for His mercy that restores. I thank the Lord for this time of isolation and for the solitude, and yet for His presence abiding, for faithful sound preaching in demonstration of the spirit and of power he sent forth his commandment upon earth and every moment and every day of this past year his word runneth very swiftly i thank the lord for every faithful elder and deacon who has stood the test of this pandemic i thank god for every sheep of the flock who who submitted and readily followed the shepherd who was fed who fed abundantly on the living word and flourish in a barren and desolate time and land. I thank the Lord for exposing the helplessness of our humanity, for confounding the wise that we may lay flat before his presence and cry to him for mercy. I thank the Lord for severing us from the entanglements of this world, awakening us to the fragility of life, humbling us to the dust and sobering us for his son's return. I thank the Lord for being favorable unto our land, forgiving the iniquity of his people, covering all our sin, taking away all his wrath, and turning himself from the fierceness of his anger. Thank the Lord for making peace in our borders and filling us with the finest of wheat. Having more than food and raiment, we had abundant supply for our every need. I thank the Lord for GMC, which he has provided to his kingdom for such a time as this. And for all this and more, I would like to thank the Lord and give all glory to God. Praise God for the testimonies. Surely the Lord deserves all praise for not abandoning us spiritually. I think more than physical safety, what you and I needed was spiritual nourishment. And the Lord has not failed to give it to us for the last nine months of lockdown. I hope you are thankful. It's mercy upon mercy. It's wealth immeasurable, nourishment most sweet and most wonderful. God has given us such mercies. Let us praise him. We will now join those who are going to pray. As I call you, please come forward um, to pray. We will have, firstly, Brother Henrik Fu, and uh, Brother Hendrik will lead us in prayer for Kuching Mission work, and followed by Brother Wyman. Uh, Brother Wyman will, Wyman will be praying uh, for the upcoming Youth Fellowship Gospel Meeting and the Ladies' Seminar on January 16th. Let us join them in prayer first. Brother Hendrik.
Let's pray. Our merciful and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that Thou hast in Thy provision brought us all here for this prayer meeting, Lord. Lord, we thank Thee for the way Thou hast seen us through the past year and how Thou hast protected and guard and watched over us. Lord, we thank Thee that Thou in Thy mercy and grace and yet again, Lord, brought us into 2021. We pray that Thou will help us to be able to magnify Thy name and be a witness for Thee in whatever areas that Thou hast brought us to. This evening, we'd like to pray for the ministry of uh, Kuching Mission. Lord, in Thy own provision, Lord, Thou hast enabled Yes, I need to be able to have this wonderful ministry into our hands, Lord. We pray that our help the ministry to grow in grace and in knowledge of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank thee for all the elders that has in has agreed to adopt this ministry for thy own glory, Lord. And with Father, we pray that Thou will help each and every one of us to pray earnestly for the growth of this ministry. We thank Thee for Brother Jeremy and Sister Nikki for their ministry there, and even for bringing Brother Simon and Sister Fiona into the ministry. And as they have indicated to, to join into this membership there, we pray that all together with Brother Jeremy and Sister Nikki and his family to be able to serve thee in this uh, new ministry that thou has brought into the Lord thou knows the burden that thou has laid upon Jeremy, and we pray that thou will help him at this point to Consider seriously, Lord, the need of a preacher or even a pastor for this ministry. Lord, we pray that I will continue to help him to meditate upon this uh, very important matter that thou has laid upon his heart, that he may serve thee as he ought to and walk in this path that thou hast prepared for him. Lord, we pray also for this father whom thou hast given him uh, an opportunity to speak to him and that he has received thy word without rebuking. We pray that thou will consider this as a sign that thou in mercy has given him another chance to minister to his father and we pray that his father may take a step of coming to the baptism truly uh, testifying that he now believes in the Lord Jesus Christ we pray also that the mother too may soon come to the salvation grace of Jesus Christ Lord we thank thee for Richard Sampson who has taken the role of uh, ministering to the people there through the weekly Zoom meeting. We pray that I will continue to help Samson to be able to minister to them and help them to be able to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Not truly there are, the harvest is truly a practice, but the laborers are few. We pray that this ministry that thou hast established for thy glory may soon spread throughout the state of Sarawak and even throughout East Malaysia. Bless this ministry for thy own glory, Lord, that all things said and done may truly be for thy honor and for thy glory. We pray all this with thanksgiving in Jesus' gracious name. 
Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for bringing us together in this manner to pray and to commune with Thee. We thank Thee for the word preached forth by Thy servant, and we pray that Thy word will help us to live out our Christian values daily wherever we may be. Lord, Thou say, sayest in Matthew 9, 37 to 38 to your disciples of old, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of harvest to send out that laborers into his harvest. We therefore commit and take this opportunity to pray for the Gethsemane Youth Fellowship's Gospel meeting to be held on the 16th of January under their loving hands. We pray that the Spirit of God will empower Brother Cornelius, who will be preaching the Gospel with wisdom, boldness, power and clarity from above, that the non-Christians may be persuaded to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal saviour. We also commit the youths from Calvary Kuching and their friends who would join virtually to hear the preaching of the gospel, that they may also be challenged to commit their lives to the Lord in faith and be saved. We pray for the upcoming Gethsemane Ladies Fellowship seminar on the topic, the legacy of the Christian woman. Pray for God's blessings on all the sisters who are laboring to organize it and, it and invite other Christian ladies to attend. Pray for the preaching of the word by pastor, that thy word may be edifying to their lives. We come in and pray all these items unto thy loving hands, asking thee to bless these meetings. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. May I now ask uh, Brother Lejoy to come forward. Brother Le Lejoy will be praying tonight uh, for the young men of our church who are serving in the national service. He will remember Brother Andre, Jonah, Jeremy, Theo and Moses Lee and also a regular worshipper, uh, Isaiah Lim. And he will also remember uh, those who are away from us in foreign countries Brandon Wong, Michelle Lee, Sean Ng and family. May the Lord hear us and keep them in His grace. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the opportunity to come together and learn the God's Word and pray together in this first Tuesday evening. We pray to Thee, especially for these young men, from this church who are serving in the national service. Uh, we remember Andre Wong, Jonathan, Jeremy Theo, Moses Lee, and also Isaiah Lim, who is worshiping together in this church. O oh God, give them guidance, courage, and strength of heart when they are facing challenges, when they are faced with challenging circumstances in the training. As it is stated in Deuteronomy, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is it that do, doeth go, doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Let the unfailing God guide our young men. We also pray to thee for the spiritual discernment and consecration to avoid all temptations and be overcomers. May the Spirit of God equip them to fight a good fight of the faith. Let them not look to the world for help. Rather seek thee together with the psalmist. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which, make, which made heaven and earth. We also pray to thee that each of them to be excellent witness of Christ, as our Lord commanded, for thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Lord, thou hast given them the opportunity to learn and understand God's word in this church. We pray to thee that let their testimony leads some of their army friends 
to turn towards the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and, come, and to come and worship and serve the Lord in this church. We also pray for their physical safety and good performance in their duties on their designated areas. We now remember, the, remember in prayers for the brethren who are living overseas. We submit Brother Brendan Wong, Sister Michelle Lee, Brother Shawning and family unto your hands. May God keep them all safe during this serious spreading of this COVID-19 in their respective places. Psalmist exhorted us that great is our Lord and, great of, and of great power, his understanding is infinite. We know not what is happening and how these things will be taking a turn. We only know that without thy knowledge, nothing is happening and everything is under the control of thy sovereign hand. We can only rely on our God and as stated in the Romans, Romans 12, 12 states that, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Regardless of the situation, let the love of God guide us all. Let the Almighty God give us the strength to pray without ceasing. We pray to be all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, please take your prayer items and pray for that. Right now, I will be giving you two to three minutes. And after that, Elder Ma will come forward and close us in prayer. praying uh, particularly with thanksgiving for Bible Witness Literature Ministry. This is the 20th year of Bible Witness printing. We started in 2001, and now it's 2021. So this year is very special to us. Another reason is by September-October issue, we would have published 100 issues of Bible Witness. And that is very special, too. So we are looking forward to some commemorative publications and productions this year. Elder Ma will give thanks and pray for those things. Shall we all arise and join Elder Ma as he closes in prayer? We praise and thank thee, O Lord God Almighty, our most high God, worshiping thee as Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We thank thee indeed for thy goodness. How often, Lord, we have been reminded, not only from thy word, but also in all the wondrous things that thou hast done, that indeed 
thou art good. And so it is also with thy people of old, the Samis, who himself have been blessed by thee. And he was able to say without any hesitation and with confidence, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And Lord God Almighty, as we come together to listen to thy word expounded by thy servant, our pastor, we thank thee for speaking to us this evening. We pray once more that the power of thy word would continue to be the double-edged sword in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that in as much as thou hast spoken, thou would also use the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to apply what thou hast taught us. We thank thee in indeed, O Lord, that thou hast done wondrous works in so many areas of our church. And we want to end once more this evening by rendering our thanksgiving for yet another item as we consider the written word that's used for the extension of thy kingdom and the edifying of souls. We thank thee, O Father, for laying upon your servant, our pastor, the need and the vision to use the written page to extend thy word. And we thank thee, O Father, that thou hast been with us this past 20 years. That, Lord, the word has gone forth widely, not only within the confines of this little island of ours, but beyond. And we pray, Lord, that thy work will continue to abound for thy honour and glory. We thank thee, O Father, that in this blessed year itself, the 20th year of the Bible Witness magazine, Lord, the 100th copy shall yet be produced for thy honour and glory. We ask, O Father, that this special year would also see as thy will allows the blessings of having greater works being done for thy honour and glory. We remember and we thank thee for what thou hast done in this past year, in most recent weeks, the publication of the Chinese version of the 365 daily exaltations from your word as well as the two volumes of My Soul's Delight. We pray, O Lord, that this will be used by your people for their own spiritual uplifting as they read and as they meditate from it. We thank thee, O Father, that thou hast been good to us, and we pray that thou will bless and give fruition to the plan to, to release several literature and media materials for the teaching of children to building up them up in the fear of the Lord. Lord, thou has been good to provide all the resources that's needed for this work. And we praise you and thank you that in times past, Thou hast provided in your own time people, God-fearing people, God-gifted and God-honouring people to do this work. And we ask, O oh Father, that in the years to come, this work will continue to prosper and that Thou will bring more able persons to shoulder the burden of this work for Thy honour. Thank you also, Lord, for providing in other ways. We remember thy gracious providence of the GMC and all the 
many additions to amend the different areas of doing this work. And we want to praise you, Lord, for thy providence in meeting all of our financial needs. Lord, thou hast been good. And we want to continue to pray that, Lord, thou will show thy marvelous works in our midst for the extension of thy kingdom. We thank thee again, O Lord, for this wonderful time that on this first prayer meeting of the new year, oh, how we remember that thou hast been with us through the difficult times in the year gone by. But Lord, as we stand, having crossed the threshold into the new year, we pray, Lord, that thou will move the hearts of each and every Assembleyan in our church, as well as our brethren in the mission field overseas. That this year, 2021, will be a blessed year when thy kingdom will continue to abound. Grant the God-given strength and grace to everyone that, Lord, thy honour will continue to be exalted highly. We praise and thank thee, and we ask, Lord, that now thou would dismiss us with thy special grace and mercy. We pray, giving thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Good night.